Hey guys, Barrett Salty Dog Performance here and I've got another video for you today. We're going to be installing a Fizzle X4 supercharger wheel upgrade on a Sea-Doo 255 260 supercharger. This is also the same supercharger that's found on the 230 horsepower models these days. So uh, I've got the supercharger here. This is a brand new one. Picked it up from Reva. All OEM, no hours on it whatsoever. So we're going to be replacing the supercharger wheel on it. And when we do that, we're gonna to need to increase the slip torque on the supercharger clutch packs, or the clutch washers. Um, the reason for that is because this uh, supercharger wheel is gonna generate more boost. Uh, we're gonna run a little bit higher RPM out of it. And we're gonna to need to be able to tighten that torque slip down. That way, when we get on the throttle really hard, the supercharger will actually spin at the rate that it needs to without slipping and then it has to kind of play catch up with it. So uh, to do that, we're gonna be using uh, some Reaver Racing uh, spring washer upgrades here. And the way that I'm gonna show you guys how to do this is a little bit different than what they include on their instructions. The way that they have them set up, I've tried to do it in the past, the way that they recommend to do it, it does not slip at all. I mean, the slip gets up to like 30 foot pounds. We don't want that, we only need it to be set for this setup in between 12 to 13 because we're only going to be targeting that amount of boost. Uh, so we've got a couple of tools here that we're going to need for it. You are going to need a backing plate to hold the supercharger. This is going to be to hold the shaft in place uh, while we're taking off the set nut on the back where all the clutch washers and everything are at. Um, this is a Reva Racing tool. They're not very cheap, but this is the way to go if you're going to be doing these. I've got a 3D printed, um, I'm gonna test this out, I've never used it before. This is a 3D printed uh, supercharger gear holder, because we're gonna need to hold that gear in place when we're gonna be checking the slip. I've got a couple of bolts to bolt the supercharger to the plate there, 17 millimeter um, uh, socket to take off the nut off of the supercharger wheel and the nut off the back. I believe that the Fizzle supercharger is a 5 8 but we'll get in that to the little bit uh, a little bit later. And we've got an E8 inverted Torx bit as well, quarter inch ratchet with an extension on it, and I'm going to break all these loose by hand first before we move on to an impact. Um, we've got a couple other things we're going to need too. We're going to need like some RTV to be able to seal everything back together, um, and then we're also going to be using a digital torque wrench to check our slip. You have to use a digital torque wrench in order to be able to do that to get an accurate reading. You can't use a click style for it. So let's get right into it. Okay, so first, like I said, we're gonna take these off. We're gonna loosen them by hand. And there's no, no particular order you have to do this to begin with. You're just gonna go around until all of them are loose. And if you wanna do them completely by hand, that's fine. If you don't have a power tool to take them off, but I'm gonna switch over to my impact now and take out all the screws and, and show you how to take off the, um, the front cover. Okay, so I've already gotten the screws out and I went ahead and flipped the back plate around so I can show you what we're gonna be doing here. Um, this does take a little bit of force to take off. There's a couple of tabs on the front cover. There's one over here as well. And what we're gonna do is, at least this is the way that I do it. So there might be people that say, oh, you don't need to do that but I'm gonna use a 3 8 extension and we're gonna place it here and we're gonna take a hammer and just lightly tap it and you can see it broke free on that side. And we're gonna to wanna to be real careful when we go over here. I've got some paper down here in case this thing is to fall off and we don't wanna damage it, so. Sorry, it's difficult doing this with the camera angle. I think we're loose now. And there we go. So you can see now we've got our cover taken off. I'm going to flip the back plate around so you can see what the supercharger looks like because I'm going to keep working from the other side now that I've got that off. The reason that I did it that way is I didn't want to hit it and then it possibly fall off down here on the concrete. Like I said, I placed some paper here to dampen any of the, the blow if it was to fall. But this is what our supercharger looks like from the factory. And this upgrade that we're gonna be doing, uh, these run about 12 PSI at about 85 to 8600 RPM. The new one that we're gonna be doing can run about 15 to 16 PSI at that RPM. So like I said, it's all brand new. This isn't gonna really be uh, much to do here. Our next step now is gonna be to clean off all the gasket maker here. 
and I'll show you what tool that I use for that. And then we're also gonna have to use some vice grips to pull out our little uh, dowel pins here as well. So I'm gonna go grab my scraper and show you how to do that. So this is what I'm gonna be using. This I actually picked up from O'Reilly's. It's a carbide, tungsten carbide uh, scraper. It's really good for removing gasket stuff like this. The thing about it is, is you really need to make sure that you're keeping it flat. Uh, you can uh, gouge some of the surface, but again, if you put a little nick or something in it, it's really not gonna be that big of a deal. We're gonna be resealing it anyways. And then we're just gonna use a small pair of vice grips just to put it on these pins and pull them out. But to use this tool, you're just gonna lay it flat. And nice and gentle go around. And we're gonna keep repeating that process until we have it all cleaned off of this side. And we're also gonna to need to do our front plate as well, or our front cover rather as well. So I'll show you how to pull the pins out real quick. Just gonna take and place our vice grips on it. Jump them down. Wiggle back and forth comes right out. So the supercharger wheel does come with longer ones. That's why these have to be taken out because the supercharger wheel is gonna go on. And because of the new size of it, it's taller. So it's not any wider, it's only taller. Um, so we're gonna be using this spacer here. It's gonna go on like that. And because of that, we're gonna need longer dowel pins, and we have those right here as well. So uh, I'm gonna pull out the other pin, remove all the adhesive, and then we're gonna get on to going ahead and taking the supercharger wheel off. All right, I went ahead and cleaned out the mating surfaces. You can see pretty clean. You don't have to get as anal as I did on this if you don't want to. If there's still a little bit left over, really not a big problem. Again, we're putting more sealing on it. It's gonna clean right up. We're gonna seal really good, don't worry about it. Uh, so this is where we're going to start using this tool here to get our supercharger wheel nut off of the front. Now this is reverse thread, so we're going to have to go clockwise to take it off, okay? So you can see on the back side of here that there is a washer looking thing right here. So we've got our spring washers here. And this tool is going to set inside of that groove. And this is what we're going to hold as we're going to be taking off the nut here. So again, clockwise. Start to come off. Sorry if I'm blocking the camera angle. Just gonna keep going until we get this taken off. Should be loose by hand now. We can take our tools off. A little more lock tight on there than we imagined. Okay, so our nut comes off. Now to get our supercharger wheel off, we're gonna end up having to use a torch and heat up the wheel and then pull it off. So you're gonna wanna have some kind of leather gloves or some thick mechanics gloves. And we're gonna wanna hold this shaft back here again when we start to try to rotate and twist and pull this off. So I'll reposition the camera, break out the torch, and show you guys how that's done. Here's the torch I'm gonna be using, Burn Somatic. This is a Map Pro. Um, these get a lot hotter, and you can dial this in really well. Um, I prefer to use this over the blue tank, so you can pick these up Lowe's, Home Depot, Ace Hardware, um, pretty much any place that sells home. Uh, like home equipment and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and heat it up. As we heat it, we're gonna turn it. We wanna to try to get the wheel and not the shaft. You can actually see there, it's already loose. So I can free spin it like that, and we're just gonna grab and pull it straight off. Now this one is brand new, so it's really easy to do. If this has been on here for a while, it's gonna be probably a little bit more difficult to do that. They aim off really easy. So we're just gonna set our wheel to the side, 
Now we're gonna go grab a uh, wire wheel on a drill or use like a brush or something and we're gonna clean up this Loctite off of here and then I'll show you how to put on the new supercharger wheel. Okay, so we've got our new Fizzle X4 wheel here and the way that these work, we're not gonna use this nut. Again, this one actually has the nut built into it and you can see that it's threaded right here. So what we're gonna do, this is gonna be reverse thread again to tighten it. And that's kind of a cool design because as this thing is spinning, it's constantly putting uh, torque onto this to keep this screwed onto it. Uh, so we're gonna be using uh, anti-seize on it rather than any Loctite. Just because it does, this is all aluminum and if we put like red Loctite or something on it, trying to bear down on this in the future, if we ever wanted to take it off and go back to stock, it's gonna be a nightmare. We could possibly strip this out. These are really delicate. Um, so we're just going to use anti-seize on here and again because it's reverse thread it's never going to come off um, it's not going to loosen up so we're going to go ahead and put a little anti-seize here on the threads Last time I did one of these, I didn't have to heat up the supercharger wheel to get it on, so let's see if I'm lucky today. Let's see. Oh wait, nope, I take it back. So we were lucky. It does slide on and we're just going to go ahead and start tightening it down. Now, we're gonna go back, we're gonna to have to grab our tool here again to hold our shaft. We're gonna use a 5 8 or a 16 mil, they're about the same on here. Um, and we are going to torque this to 23 foot pounds. And again, I can't stress enough, we are gonna be going counterclockwise to tighten this, okay? This is all reverse thread, so we're gonna place our tool again. shaft in place. Hit it one more time just for good measure. Okay, we are at 23 foot pounds on that. I'm going to reposition the camera and now show you guys how to do the slip adjustment on here. All right, so we've got our spring washers here. We're going to go ahead and take these out of the packaging. They come in a small little bag here. And we do need to go ahead and pre-oil these. What we're going to do first, we're going to need oil. We're going to need to do everything, right? These have been pre-oiled a little bit from the factory, but I'm actually going to go ahead and add some more to it. So, first going to take this off. And this is standard, you know, um, uh, standard thread. It's not reverse thread. So we're going to go ahead and put our tool back in place here. We're just going to break this nut loose. As we're doing that, you can see these clutch washers start to come off. So we're going to need to take the nut off. Pull this off as well. We're just going to set these here. Let me check the camera angle real quick. Yep, we're pretty good there. So this is the factory orientation. You've got, you can see that these are beveled. You've got one that goes straight on, the bevel facing out, two that are stacked together, and another two that are stacked together. Once you put all those on, a fresh set of these will get you to around 10 foot pounds. Uh, because I'm only going to be running around 8200 to 8300 RPM in this particular setup, I'm only going to really worry about shooting for about 12 foot pounds of slip. 
So what I'm going to do is just do these in a different order here. So we're going to get some oil and rag down. Uh, this can take a couple different times to adjust this. We're going to be using one Reva washer to start off with, and three of our and two of our fact I'm sorry, four of our factory ones. So we're going to put these two on like this. Both of them with the edge facing out. They're just going to stack on. They're not going to be, you know, in like a little oval shape here. And we're going to take our third one, it's going to be a Reva washer, and then our fourth and fifth are going to be stacked on. And we're going to tighten this nut back down to 22 foot-pounds, and we're going to check the torque slip on it then. And I'm guessing it's probably going to be around 11, 12, if it's not quite where we need it to be, we'll just add another one of the Reva washers here. Uh, Reva wants you to take all five of their brand new washers and stack them in the orientation that I just showed. But as I taught you guys earlier about it, I tried to do that before and it just would not slip. I mean, I was reading 30 foot pounds and it, I mean, I thought I was gonna break my tools, you know? So I don't really understand how they're getting 15 foot pounds supposedly is what they say they get with it. And I've talked to other people that are using the, the washers, but for whatever reason, I've not been able to get it that way. And I'm doing this in a way that I know works and gets me to what I needed to be at. So we're going to take all five of these and just put a little bit of oil on. Washers on, Reva washer on, and then our two factory ones. Bring our hands up a little bit here. And this has to go on. You can see it's recessed. It's going to go over the shaft, and then our nut. The numbers are going to go on the outside because we want nice, clean, smooth mating surfaces together. Take our torque wrench and we're going to go to 22 foot pounds. So 22 for the rear, 23 for the front. shaft in place again. And once you get there, you can kind of just disintention on it, let that tool sit in place. Okay, we're at 22. We're going to break out our digital torque wrench and see where we're going to be at in our slip. I'm going to reposition the camera. That way you guys can see the digital torque wrench. Okay, so we're going to take our 3D printed tool here and try this. Like I said, I've never used one of these before. I'm going to see how it works out. But we're going to put that over our supercharger gear there. And we've, uh, I've got the torque wrench here set to 12 foot pounds because that's kind of where I want to be at. Like I said, we're going to be targeting between 12 and 13. We want our slip to be about one foot pound or one foot pound lower than what our target boost is. That way, once we let out on the throttle, if you don't have a blow off valve and we let out on the throttle, this is going to have a little bit of give once that throttle closes and that boost is still trapped in there. That way it can give just a little bit on this and not risk you know, damaging the shaft or anything. So we got it set at 12, and again, because we're going to be tightening this, we're going to be going counterclockwise. Right now, we're at about 10. 
So we're gonna go ahead, go back over, and I'm gonna repeat the process that I did a second ago, add another Reva washer to, washer to it, and see where we're at with our slope. Okay, so I messed around with the torque slip for a little bit, and it's probably because this is a brand new supercharger. Um, I wasn't really able to find a sweet spot and be able to get to 12 foot pounds in, in any number of combinations that I would do. Anytime I add just, uh, you know, adding two of these with it, it would take it to 20 pounds in one configuration, another one would be 15. So what we're gonna do is set it to 15 because it is brand new. And over time, it is gonna start to lose a little bit of the slip anyways. Uh, so it'll, over time, bring us down into that 12. And it's not really gonna be a problem, um, you know, because if, if we imagine this supercharger saying that we were gonna target 15 pounds of boost, um, but we never really even go full throttle on it, and we're only going to like, you know, 10 pounds of boost on it, and we let out on the throttle on it, it's not really gonna be that big of a deal. It's only when we're trying to hit that peak number that we wanna to try to have that little bit of slip so when we close down on it, it's not gonna cause so much shock to the shaft and everything on it. Um, so it's not gonna hurt it at all. I mean, I ride my jet ski that makes 18, 19 PSI all the time, and we'll you know, only take it to 7,000 RPM, let off the throttle really quickly. It's not gonna hurt anything. So like I said, this is probably gonna be beneficial to take it to 15 foot pounds uh, to begin with, because over time it is gonna start to break in, and we'll probably be right in that 12 uh, foot pound sweet spot what we're looking for. So the combination that I'm gonna go with is I'm gonna do three of the OEM washers that are gonna be stacked all on top of each other, just like this. And we're gonna take two of the Reva ones and we're gonna have the beveled edges out on each one of those. So that's gonna be our combination. So we'll put a little oil on these again. Go ahead and clean them back up. Just from the times of taking them off and putting them back on. already cleaned the threads here on our shaft when we go to put the nut on we're going to have to put red loctite on it. So we're going to clean it up with some brake clean. We'll try to keep from getting any oil on that as much as we can. Probably put another little bit of brake clean on it. Just like that. take some red Loctite. I don't know if you guys have seen this, but they came out with these cool little glue stick looking things now, and this stuff is great. It doesn't run, it sets in a lot quicker. It should be more than enough. Surprisingly, from the factory, this has no type of lot, no Loctite whatsoever on it. So, tighten this down. Again, 22 foot pounds on this. I'm sorry, this video is probably going a little bit longer than what I wanted it to, but this just goes to show you when you do send these off to people to uh, be rebuilt and have all this stuff done, you're definitely paying them for their time because it. It does take a little bit of time to do this stuff and do it correctly. Okay, 22 foot pounds there. And then we're going to check our slip here. I think it went to about 15 foot pounds earlier. So let's set it at 16.
15.2. So, um, like I said, this is really supposed to be a 15 to 16 psi wheel. And, uh, you know, Riva says to take their washers and put them all in the configuration that I have it here. But if you do that, it's going to be, the torque is going to be way, way, way higher. So I don't know why their instructions say to use all the washers in this orientation. And if you try to put them in the factory orientation with all the Riva washers, you only get about 10. So I, I've yet to see that combination that Riva says to use. And no knock on them, those guys are great. They help me out all the time with all my OEM stuff, a lot of aftermarket stuff. But this sequence that they want it to be in just doesn't really make any sense. I'm trying to get to 12. I'm unable to get that. I could have possibly put another OEM one on here and gotten to that 12 range. But, you know, I don't want my nut to be all the way out on the threads. I want it to be, you know, seated onto the shaft really well. So, like I said, ended up just using two of these washers and we got right at our 15 of what this wheel is really designed for. So, uh, the slip and everything's good on it now. I'm going to clean the workbench off here and I'm going to show you how to put a gasket maker. Uh, we're going to be using the spacer and just putting it all on that rather than trying to put it on the, on here and then put it back onto the face of this. It's kind of easier to just lay down some shop towels and uh, like these blue ones that don't have any lint or anything on them and smear it on there and then we'll put that on and bolt everything back up and this thing will be ready to go.